Almost three years ago, Reddit user RedOnceBlue80 shared a truly eerie experience that she captured using an app called Sleeper's Android. The app's used to help improve your sleep, and records your nighttime noises, such as coughing, snoring, and all that jazz, essentially so you can analyse it the next morning. The results for the first couple of months were fairly unremarkable, and just the usual nighttime noises one would expect. At 2.04am on the 20th of December 2013, whilst asleep in bed with her three-year-old child, this audio clip was captured. There was nobody else in the house at the time, well, that she knew of at least, so naturally this audio clip weirded her out. It sounded as if she was talking to someone else in the room, despite being asleep and having absolutely no memory of the exchange. There were also a lot of unusual, loud clicking sounds. Now your first thought might be that she was just mumbling in her sleep, but take another listen. Now with the audio cleaned up a little. What are you doing? Oh, okay. It's difficult to be sure what's being said at the very end of the clip. The user believes it's someone saying her name, Jenny. Others say they hear, I'm dead, I'm Danny, or that's them. The audio has since been analysed by a professional, and though it is indeed her voice that says, what are you doing? It was determined that it's impossible for the other voice to be hers or her son's. In the words of the analyzer, the other person in the recording definitely isn't you talking to yourself, nor is it your son. Your voice's pitch in the question, what are you doing, is around 265 hertz, C4 in musical notes. The answerer's voice seems to be around 95 hertz, an F sharp, too. That's a relatively low voice, even for a man. Some remain convinced that the user was the victim of a home invasion, and that Jenny inadvertently recorded her intruder. They say the unusual ambient noises sound as if someone's rummaging around the room, that the pause in the clicking noises and momentary silence after Jenny says, what are you doing? is down to the intruder being startled. Others think this recording is something more paranormal. There are some quite interesting theories to read about on the actual page linked below. Make sure to check it out if you're interested. Whatever the case, Jenny has since moved out of that house. After that, I can't really blame her. Three years ago, a user by the name of Parthomp started a thread simply titled, I think someone is following me. Attached were these pictures and the text. I noticed that one of my shocks on my car was making a lot of noise, and my car was riding hard, so I just figured that I'd blown it. When I crawled under my car, I found this. I can only assume it's a GPS tracker held on with a large magnet. Now, what should I do? Of course, conspiracies started flying around on the thread, saying that this was an FBI tracker. However, the box was quickly and correctly identified as a civilian purchasable GPS tracking device. This particular model was extremely accurate in pinpointing the location of its target, and cost between $400 and $800. So, who was stalking Parthomp? 
it soon came to light that the most likely suspect was his own distrustful girlfriend. Parthump himself wrote, About a month ago, it was a very close friend of mine's birthday. This is a girl. My now known crazy girlfriend doesn't like her at all for that very reason. Well, for a month, I told my girlfriend I wasn't going to go to my friend's party at the casino. But when the time came up, I thought, screw this, I'm going. So I did, and all night, my girlfriend called and called. I think it was 45 times or more. When I finally talked to her, she mysteriously knew more than she could have, but never told me how. Parthomp informed everyone in the thread that he had sent his girlfriend a text, hinting at what he had found under his car. All of a sudden, she stopped answering her phone. The plot thickened. Hungry for more information, other users kept asking for updates on the situation. Parthomp said that his girlfriend was at home. He wrote that he was going to confront her about it, and keep everyone up to date on what happened next. And that's the last thing he posted. He went to confront his girlfriend and never returned to the thread, never made another post, and nobody knows what happened to him. He simply disappeared from the site. Now, of course, there's a lot of speculation about what happened next. Maybe he wanted to keep the truth private, and there was a good reason for the device being there. Maybe it was all just a prank or a fraudulent post. Maybe something altogether more sinister happened to him, and his girlfriend was crazier than anyone anticipated. Ultimately, we'll probably never find out, but the post still gets talked about in certain corners of the site to this day, with users putting forward their own theories about what happened to Parthomp. Reddit loves a good mystery. Those of you who watched my last video might remember the mysterious story of Jimmy C. Personally, I think it's one of the most interesting and unsettling stories I've narrated on this channel, and it's worth bringing up again here, especially since the development. Five months ago or so, a post appeared on the site, asking users to share their unexplainable experiences. One reply stood out. The user wrote about an encounter he had about 10 years ago in a bar on Tybee Beach, Savannah, Georgia. He had taken the day off work to go fishing with his girlfriend, but instead decided to head over to the bar across from the beach. After a while, another man walks in and sits right between the user and his girlfriend, despite there being plenty of free seats in the place. He goes on to describe this man in great detail, from his bleached, early 90s hairstyle, to his filed teeth, piercing grey eyes, and expensive fashion sense, stating that everything seemed normal at first glance, but completely off at the same time. When the user and the man were alone, he introduces himself as Jimmy C, and says that he jumped off the San Francisco Bay Bridge years ago, and that he's been keeping a watch on the user. The guy also says numerous things about the user, things he had no way of knowing, such as, You were supposed to go fishing today. If you had, I would have drowned you in that ocean. Despite all this, the user felt nothing but a strange calmness, and a sort of knowing feeling, something that his girlfriend also felt at the time. They both agreed that they didn't believe this guy was human. The girlfriend even said with certainty that that man was a demon. Now, Tybee Beach apparently has more than its fair share of eccentric characters hanging around, and the most obvious explanation would be that Jimmy C was just one of them. But the original poster says the whole situation was completely off, and that if you had experienced it, you too would understand that this guy was something other than a man. What that might be is, of course, debatable. The encounter ended with Jimmy C telling the guy that he'll see him again, and that the next time they meet, he'll be driving a black Mercedes, 
and the license plate will be Utopia. It's been ten years since the incident took place, and it's haunted the Reddit user ever since, making him paranoid every time a black car passes by. Now, this story is pretty creepy by itself, but there's since been an update. The original post was taken down without explanation, and the poster hasn't been heard from since. But just this month, a new post appeared on the site with the title, Remember the creepy story about Jimmy C and the black Mercedes? Update. This Reddit user had done a little detective work, and found out that a black Mercedes with the Utopia license plate really did exist in California. Here's a portion of his post. I discovered that it hadn't been registered with the DMV in a while, and had expired registration, and it hadn't been serviced in a while. It was as if it was just bought at the start of the year, and then parked in a garage somewhere for months. I'd signed up for Carfax at the time with the car's info, and completely forgot about it, until I just got an email asking how the recent maintenance on the Mercedes went. So I logged in, and found that on Friday, the car was taken in to get new tyres put on it. Now here's what's interesting. Not only has the car apparently been registered and got new tyres, and thusly is apparently back on the road, but the place it was registered and taken for tyres is just a short drive away from the San Francisco Bay Bridge. I don't know if I'm allowed to post the name of the actual store for privacy's sake, but I will show you the place on the map. According to Google Maps, it's only a 21 minute drive. So, it seems like Jimmy C's back on the road. I find the whole thing really interesting. And if another update comes along, I'll be sure to keep you guys up to date. If you're interested in hearing the whole story, you can click on the annotation on screen and hear my narration of it. Otherwise, you can read the whole thing by following the link down in the description. Some of you might find this one a bit upsetting. A thread was made a year ago, where Reddit users that have killed someone in self-defense discussed their stories, and talked about the psychological repercussions they faced. A lot of the entries could have made it into the video, but the one I'm including here goes as follows. A Redditor, posting from a throwaway account for obvious reasons, was in his home office playing Command and Conquer, wearing a set of noise-cancelling headphones. Immersed in the game and oblivious to the outside world, he had no idea what was going on only 30 feet away. During one particularly quiet moment, he thought he could hear the faint cries of his wife coming from downstairs. Taking off his headphones, he could hear his 20-month-old daughter crying, and an unknown man with a thick Mexican accent telling his wife to shut the hell up. As if he was running on autopilot, the Reddit user took his 45 out of his lockbox and walked downstairs quietly, terrified he was going to find his wife dead at the bottom. He doesn't even remember doing any of this at the time. When he reached the bottom and opened the door to where the noises were coming from, he saw something that doesn't bear thinking about. There was a man in the middle of raping his wife. He would later find out this had been going on for 10 minutes before he heard what was happening. Here's a section of his post. I never said a word to the guy. Not while I was upstairs, not while I was coming down the stairs, and not when I walked into the room. His back was to me, so he had no idea I was even standing there. He was holding his knife in his right hand so that was the arm I grabbed with my left when I pulled him off. He spun away from her and towards me with a confused look on his face, and I shot him in the chest at nearly point-blank range before he had a chance to say a single word. His face went pale as he went onto one knee, and I fired twice more. One hit his neck, and the second missed entirely. I was told later that the first shot was the fatal one. 
That's the short version of the story. Given the circumstances, the police didn't pursue any charges. As you can imagine, this was a highly traumatic experience for the user, as well as all of the other users who posted their stories too. Many of them involve home invasions and random attacks. We can only hope that we don't find ourselves in a similar situation. Trusels is a community on Reddit made up of some of the most deplorable people on the internet. If you don't know what a trusel is, these guys sum it up pretty neatly. The majority of us accept that it's okay to have differing opinions on things. In fact, it's a good thing. But these guys take it to an extreme. They're essentially a subreddit full of pro-rape, pro-pedophilia, pro-violence users who occasionally dabble in a little racism here and there, blaming others for their own inadequacies. For example, they might show a time-lapse of a girl growing from a baby to the age of 16, and they'll all discuss at what age they find her sexually attractive. The results are usually unsettling. That's just one mild example out of hundreds. As some of these screenshots show, there's plenty of creepy conversations going on over there. Needless to say, it's a pretty disturbing subreddit to scroll through. It'd be nice to think that all of the members were just trolls, but a quick glimpse at all of their accounts will show you they're being completely sincere. Earlier this year, Trusels was quarantined by the site, something that only happens to communities dedicated to shocking or highly offensive content. If you do manage to get in there though, you'll find all manner of messed up posts that you probably wish you'd avoided. That is if you value your faith in humanity. Even if you only have a little bit left in you, Trusels will kill off whatever's left. It's just a sad place to be. Hey guys, Lazy here, and thank you very much for listening. Yeah, sorry for the delay on this video, either way I hope you enjoyed it. A lot of stuff going on at the minute in real life, applications and all that. Also, I was thinking about making another video in this sort of style, but uh, with two Chan posts instead. I'm sure if I looked hard enough I could rustle a few creepy posts up, but we'll see, we'll see. Next time's gonna be a story video anyway, so uh, don't worry about that. More stories on the way soon. If you did like this video, then be sure to head on down south and smash that like button, or I'll smash you. Subscribe and join the Lazy Legion if you haven't already, and I'll be back soon with something new for you to enjoy. Until then guys, you stay spooky, and remember, the best things happen in the dark.